So we, we, go, we go now to something properly cerebral now. We move on to the intelligence side of adventure. Uh, Anne Law, uh, creative explorer. Uh, she escaped her job and secure London life to cross risky territories in the pursuit of kindness and beauty on an attempt to change the negative perceptions and views that society often holds. Uh, Anne Law then went on to publish her stories and her pictures in a beautiful book called Shifting Sands. Please welcome Anne Law. Thanks, George. So, we decided to take an old banger to a dodgy part of the world. Unsurprisingly, nobody would sponsor us. So, Lucy and I, being stubborn as we are, decided to fuck it and do it ourselves. So, it took us two years to um, save up the money. Um, to plan the trip and to um, basically get through a lot of blood, sweat and tears to get the show on the road. Um, we spent six months driving cloth around, anti-clockwise, around the uh, Mediterranean. Um, we spent two weeks in every country from Morocco all the way through to Turkey. And what we wanted to do was to experience and document everyday life in the region, which is so negatively portrayed in the mainstream media. I did a drawing every day of the trip because for my own mental health and to avoid getting depression on the trip, I decided I needed to draw. So what happened, what started off as five minutes uh, sketches in Morocco turned into six hour long drawings by the time I got to Turkey. So that's 127 drawings. I thought this was what I was gonna be doing over six months. I thought I was gonna be on holiday, doing huge massive canvases and paintings over six months, living an amazing life. That totally wasn't the case. It turns out that an old car actually takes quite a lot of time. So anyway, nice for you, hey? <laughs> this is what I ended up doing. So I had to adapt myself. I had to adapt my artistic and creative ideas of what I wanted to do into four moleskin sketchbooks. Um, and so when Lucy was driving, I'd be sat in the passenger seat doing some sketches. Or when we were broken down by the side of the road, I'd be there sketching. It became quite time consuming. Landy, 43 years old, thing of beauty, classic British car when she left. When she came back, she, we pimped her out in every country. She definitely wasn't the right kind of car for this kind of trip. But in the end, she was the best thing that ever happened to us. She won the hearts of everyone we travelled through and saw. That was good English, wasn't it? <laughs> she caused mechanical havoc throughout the entire trip. We had uh, three quarters of the trip with no functioning brakes. Um, for about a third of the trip, the clutch didn't work. We lost uh, the accelerator cable at certain points. We lost the brakes fully on a mountain pass going down in Lebanon. That's so much less scary than doing paperwork. <laughs> Landy took us to amazing places in the world. This is a uh, Land Rover garage in Amman. Uh, we had to drive from Petra to Amman with no brakes. Um, we spent a beautiful evening in this uh, graveyard of cars. Um, and yeah, that's great. So, from the sublime to the ridiculous. We thought we were going to spending, be spending all our time in Sabratha, in Leptis Magna in Libya, looking at all the beautiful um, archaeology. Turns out we spent most of our time in car garages trying to fix our battery. But that's where the conversation was. The mundane. This was in the morning before going to Libya. We were shitting our pants. Um, and quite literally, I drew some there. Um, I love drawing. I love drawing what's in front of me. It's not about the big, massive um, palaces and uh, beautiful, kind of famous landscapes. It's about the mundane. Generosity. We were welcomed into every home we went to um, with open arms and actually being two women in an old car was the safest way to travel because everyone wanted to look after us. Our vulnerability was our biggest strength. This is Heba's house and Emen's house, two amazing women. The thing about drawing also is that you get to sketch places where you can't really take pictures. So this is in Tunis, this is a hammam. I spent a few hours hanging out in the hammam but then sitting there drawing, watching the world go by, listening to women's chatter, and actually drawing environments which you wouldn't normally get to see or even record. A great picture, hey? So, this is in the police station. We'd been stopped six times on the road during that day. And so this is like the one time we were going to be on Algerian TV. And we were sat, sat there in their waiting room and they were asking us about which football team we preferred. 
I don't like football. <laughs> Foreign office website and insurance is hugely important on adventure, but actually it was the henna on our hands, it was the charms, the l lucky charms and the trinkets, it was the smiles and the, fi uh, the high fives that we gave people, that's what kept us safe, it's what humanised us, it's what people were drawn to. The idea of risk is different. So we were really worried about our drive from Misrata to Benghazi. It was 800 kilometers, and we were quite worried about terrorism activities and getting kidnapped. All our Libyan friends, the only thing they would say to us is, beware of the camels on the road. <laughs> oh. This is an interesting drawing. <laughs> um, yeah, Landy broke down all the time, and so I ended up drawing her quite a lot. So there she is in the foreground. Um, she made us go to really weird places like industrial districts. The Mediterranean, it's got an amazing feel, and in every country we went to, whether it's um, in Beirut, whether it's Marseille, whether it's in Tripoli, um, there's a sense of the Mediterranean, this incredible spirit that is, crosses boundaries of countries, is just this wonderful um, sensation. Football, see, I hate it, but actually it brings everyone together. This is in, whilst in, we were in Jerusalem where there was the Gaza Strip, um, all the Gaza issues happening, all the bombing sirens going overhead, and we were all sat drinking beers in the open air watching the semi-final of the World Cup, and everyone there, every religion, every race was congregated having fun together. There's this incredible fear of the unknown. Everywhere we went, from home, everyone told us, you know, this is dangerous, you're going to die. But from every country, from one country to another, from one village to another, everyone said to us, no, don't go there, they're going to kill you. So what my question is, how can we move from this, uh, this fear of the unknown to a sense of curiosity instead? So one thing everyone said to us in every single country was, please go home and tell people we're not terrorists. We're just, just like you, we want to live peaceful, lovely lives. Um, so that's all I want to say. Thank you very much. Well done.